This is what we wanted to see. We already made a video two weeks ago talking about Seattle Kraken fourth overall pick Shane Wright. We talked in that piece about the updates, the rumblings, the rumors saying that there might actually be a way for Shane Wright to play in the AHL in 23-24 rather than get forced into the NHL where he may be rushed or sent back down to the OHL where he was already too good to play in. This entire thing has been a roller coaster of emotions considering that Wright was supposed to be a first overall pick and he didn't go first, he went fourth, he slipped past New Jersey, Montreal, and Arizona. The Kraken snagged him up, they played him in the AHL last year after going through all the hoops and hurdles to get that process underway. But because there was this entire thing saying, okay, well, 22-23 may have been the perfect year for Wright development-wise, cup of coffee in the NHL, sent down to the AHL, World Juniors, OHL playoffs, AHL playoffs too, he was going all over the place and still continuing to show progress. While that might have been a great year for him, 23-24 presents its own challenges because you still have some of the same issues that arose from last year. You would have to sit him out in the NHL before he's eligible to play in the AHL. Or you'd have to send him down to the OHL, wherein he's not really got anything to learn from anymore, right? And so in the last video, we made the update known that according to some sources, it was apparent that GM Ron Francis of the Seattle Kraken was working towards getting this done to appeal the CHL's ruling of having guys needing to play CHL hockey before they're eligible to the AHL and give Wright the special exceptional circumstances granted so that he would be able to play in the American Hockey League without any penalties. Well, we had ourselves 32 thoughts the other day, Elliot Friedman going out there on the podcast saying pretty much this. If he does not make the Kraken, I'm under the impression that the CHL is in agreement that it doesn't make any sense for him to go back there and Wright will go to the AHL. Credit to Ron Francis and the CHL for sorting this out and coming to a very common sense solution. Very good news for Wright's development. And Emerald City Hockey is the Twitter account that went out there and posted this. Of course, they do Seattle Kraken stuff. Give them a follow. But this is the best type of news that we could have asked for. However, I am kind of curious as to how this conclusion was reached. Not the idea that Wright is probably better served off in the AHL because he's not good enough for the NHL, too good for the OHL. Not that idea. I'm okay with that. It's just, where exactly does this agreement come from? Is this the CHL making yet another exceptional status claim for a guy that is technically breaking the rules by going to the AHL early and being granted that status? Or is this the CHL acquiescing to what is essentially their own rules here? We've already talked about this in the prior video, but OHL athletes need to play a certain amount of seasons in the OHL in order to be considered advanced enough to play in the AHL. This is because CHL teams and leagues, they don't want to lose out on all of their good talent. They want to put butts in the seats, and having talented players in their league helps that happen. So there's that CHL-NHL agreement where it's like, okay, if we take your prospects from your CHL teams, we're not going to use them in the AHL until they play a certain amount of time in your league. Shane Wright was under the very unfortunate circumstance both times of not actually fulfilling these requirements. He missed out on an entire OHL season due to COVID. He played at the World Under-18s that season in 2021, but he played zero games with Kingston. And this most recent season, he played 24 games in total in the OHL. 20 regular season Spitfire games and four playoff games. Had he played one more game that would have counted as a full season's worth of play, and he would have been granted AHL status just by default. This happens because he already played an extra year in general because he was an OHL exceptional status player. So with all the factors aligning here for Wright, it was honestly just very coincidental and just unlucky that he didn't get the full season's worth of time played in order to be granted regular AHL status eligibility. The only reason he was able to play in the AHL this previous year is because he sat out an appropriate amount of NHL games to validate the sending him down. This is why it was kind of concerning because the idea going around in everyone's minds was saying that, hey, if they wanted to do the same thing with Wright again, they would have to 
keep him on the NHL team and sit him out for two weeks once more. That's probably not the best way to go about it. And so Ron Francis contacting the CHL and the CHL saying that it's okay for Wright to go to the AHL, this is prime. This is perfect. It doesn't put any pressure on Shane Wright. It doesn't force him to be an NHL player right away. It just allows him to go at his own pace and say, hey, in the OHL, you are already too good. There's nothing really extra for you to gain in that league. In the AHL, you are already producing pretty well, too. I mean, six points, eight games played in the regular season, and nine points in 24 games when the Firebirds went to the finals. And so now, next season is going to be Shane Wright's opportunity to really grasp onto the pro game. Use his AHL ice time to help form those habits and to help keep up with the pace. This is going to help him out so much more than another season playing off against 16, 17, 18-year-olds in the CHL would have in any respect. Plus, this helps out with the contract situation as well, because not to get all cynical on y'all here, but if Shane Wright is not as good for longer, this will make it easier when the Kraken inevitably have to re-sign him sometime down the line. If he doesn't have enough NHL experience and enough NHL points and skill to justify getting a huge money deal, it's better for them overall, because Shane Wright is probably going to become a good player, but he's probably going to become great at the NHL level, let's say when he's 21, 22, 23, considering the path he's on right now, playing the AHL in 23, 24, he'll turn 20 in January, and then by the time he's 20 turning 21, maybe then he is a rookie, quote-unquote, in the National Hockey League. Shane Wright always had some issues with pacing in general, and it was sort of a thing where it was like, you knew he was a gamer, you knew he was a workhorse, you knew he had the shot, you knew he had the offensive talent to make things work, but the way he plays the game was a lot more methodical than many of these other first overall picks that we had seen. He doesn't have the same intensity and driving power that Nathan McKinnon has, he doesn't have the same ability to take over a shift purely through his skating like Jack Hughes or Connor McDavid do. Shane Wright instead relied a lot on his instincts and his positional play to make things right. He was a guy who, when you watched him in the OHL in his draft-eligible year, you would see many shifts where Wright doesn't really move in the offensive zone when he doesn't have the puck. But when he sees an opportunity, he sees a point in time where it's like, okay, if I go to this area of the ice, there's a 90% chance that puck is in the back of the net in the next five seconds. He'll do that. He'll exploit that area, and he'll find a way to put a goal on the board, either through his shot or through sending a really nice pass cross crease or something. He was a very smart, cerebral player that did not exert any effort when he didn't need to, which is sort of you know, a testament to his hockey brain, but it also doesn't really bode too well when you project it to an NHL rink. So overall, there are a lot of things that Wright needs to improve upon, but he still has all the fundamentals to become a great hockey player. It's just if you tried to force that out of him in 23-24 in the NHL, you might not actually get the best results possible. So credit to Ron Francis, credit to the CHL for sorting this out and giving Wright that exception. This also isn't even the first time the CHL has granted their players leave to the AHL in general. That entire COVID shutdown year where there wasn't an OHL season period, you had a few guys actually suit up in the AHL throughout the entirety of the CHL. Some of these guys 18, 19, 20 years old would be playing AHL hockey for a little bit before returning to their CHL teams. Some other guys played in Europe, but just the fact that this is an open option that we have seen before gives the CHL a lot more reason to say, okay, well, why not? Why not give Shane Wright that exception? Because he was exceptional for us ever since he debuted at 16 years old. He lost out in a year due to COVID. He played only 24 out of the 25 games needed to get a full season's worth of play under his belt in the most previous year because Windsor ended up getting swept. So why not go out there and grant the guy what he's due? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Shane Wright getting that yes? I mean, it's all rumor at the end of the day because Friedman just said he believes that this is what's going to happen. He's under the impression that the CHL is going to be able to send right to the AHL. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire thing? I think it's a really great move. It's a great progression with the system here, and I'm pretty sure most of y'all will be in agreement. So thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.